In the last few videos, we've been taking a closer look at the Grades tab in Notebull. In this video, I'm going to dig a little bit more into what it looks like to actually grade items in the Grades tab, and then you'll be able to see how those grades calculate and what it looks like for your view versus the students. So here I am in the Grades tab, and I've set up my Grades tab, and I did that in the last few videos. So I'm using a percentage scale. I can actually show you by clicking on grade display here and you can see that I'm using percentage scale right now I have a few things turned off for my students and I'm also using points enabled so using those settings that I created I'm going to start adding some grades here now one thing to know is that the grades and the assignments tab in Nopal, they really work hand in hand. So when you create assignments, you will be prompted to select a category for those assignments and then they will go into your grades tab. I'm doing assignments in the next set of videos for the tutorial series because I do think it's important to have your categories and your grades tab set up before you start creating assignments. But there will be some overlap here. So strictly looking at the grades tab, I can go ahead and click add grade, and this will just enter a grade item into the grade book. Now, this is not what I would do if I'm collecting assignments from students where I want them to submit it to my Notebook class. If I'm doing that, I would be creating these items as assignments rather than grades. Times that you would create a grade rather than an assignment is for something like participation. If you want students to have one participation grade and they're not actually submitting something or turning something in by a specific date, I would enter that as a grade. So I might enter class participation. I could choose my category. You can choose an available and a due date. It's not really that essential. Available is when the students will see it. So if you don't want your students to actually see that until midterms or till the end of the semester, you can pick a date for when they see it. The points here, since I enabled points in my grades tab display settings, I have to enter points. Now, if this is the only thing in my whole participation category, it really doesn't matter because if it's the only thing there, it's still going to equal 10% of that total grade. So I could enter 10 points or whatever I want. If I'm entering more than one thing in the class participation tab, or I'm sorry, in the participation tab, I might just want to keep that in mind that they might weigh against each other if they don't all equal the same point value. Grade display type, that means how I want students to see this grade. I can do points, which means that I will grade out of the 100 points. I could put 90, 95, any of those in there, and that's how it will grade. Another option is complete or incomplete. That's this incomplete option there. That means that students either get all of the points or zero. Percentage, that means I'm grading in percentage. Since I entered 100 as my point example, uh, it's going to be the same as points because it's a 100 percentage scale. So I could enter a 99%, a 98%, etc. Another option would be to give students a letter grade. So that would be the A, B, C, D, and that would be based on how I've set up my grade scale. So I'm going to choose, just for this example, to give students points. And I could also, if I perhaps did this already in an Excel file, I could choose to upload a file to just pull all of that data in if I wanted. For this example, I'm not going to do that. I'm choosing points and hitting Create. So now I see that even though I labeled this Category 4, it's at the front because it actually has a item in it. Um, so once I start adding grade items to the other tabs, you will see them start to populate through here. But now I can see for this particular um, for this particular grade item, it's appearing right there. It tells me a few things, grades are not published and others. I'm going to go ahead and create a second gradebook item just because I want to show you an example of all of the different ways to enter points and grades and everything. So for this one, I'm choosing add grade. I'm going to name this test one. And again, this is not a test that they are taking in Notebook. 
this would be a test that I am just entering the grade for. If I want them to actually take a test in Notebull, that would be in the Assignments tab, and I will cover that in another video. I'm going to give it some kind of a point value within that category, and I'm going to choose to give them percentage. So for this, I'm actually going to change it so you can see how that calculates. And then I'm going to hit Create here. And now I have my test grade, my class participation grade. I'm going to go ahead and give them a presentation grade, and I'm going to mark this inside of their class project. Again, example. I'm going to do the display as a letter grade, and I'm going to give this the value or the weight of 80 points. I'm going to add one more grade type and we're going to do the last one which is that complete or incomplete. Uh, I am going to make this one a journal. I'm going to give it 20 points. Make it weigh 20 points and it's that complete or incomplete. I'm moving it over to the project category just to show you how it will look when there are two items in one category. Then I'm going to choose to create it here. I went a little quickly through that, so feel free to refresh and play that again. But just to show you, I have entered some grade items into three categories in my grade book. One of them is a test, and it is in the test category. Another one is a participation grade, and that is in the participation category. And then I put a journal and a presentation in the project category. So we're going to take a look at how to grade these, and then we're going to talk a little bit about how they calculate. So here, test one, a few things to note. This is the name of the grade. It is in the category of tests, and that category, everything in that category when it calculates together, weighs 20% of the final grade. All of that is based on the settings that I did leading up to this video. Grades are not published yet. That means students cannot see these grades yet. And it is it weighs 50 points. They will see their grade as a percentage. So let's go ahead and grade this one. Say my students took the test. I have a paper in front of me with all of their scores on it, and I'm just going to go through and enter. And again, I am entering in percentage for this example. So I've just entered all of the grades that my students had for test one. I just typed them right in here. And you will notice that the overall grade is the same as test one. This is what I'm seeing as the professor because I've only entered one single item in the grade book. So right now that mathematically is what their overall grade is because there is nothing else. Grades are not published, so my students aren't actually seeing this yet. If I'm curious, I can also just click that more tab choose view as and go ahead and take a look at what a specific student sees. So the student can see that this grade item is out there, but they don't see their actual grade yet because I haven't published their grade to them. So I'm going to X out of that student view and I can go ahead and if I click grades not published, it will give me the option to go ahead and publish it. And now my students will be able to see what their grades were. So if Anu came into this course, he would see his grade is 90% and the point value was 50. So there I've published that one. That is what that one is done. Now I'm going to move on to, let's take a look at this project area. So let's take a look at this project part here. Um, I have two different items in the project and they have two different weights for that category because this one is 20 and this one is 80. So those are two different point values. So what that means is this presentation here, whatever I give that is going to have more weight within this category than the journal because the journal is only worth 20. The journal is incomplete or complete. That means the student either did it or they did not do it. To enter incomplete and complete grades, you simply check or click once and that makes a check mark appear. If you click twice, that makes an X appear and that is giving the student zero. So check is full credit, X is zero. 
That's how the complete and incomplete work in Notebook. So now I've entered that. If I'm still waiting for a student to turn something in and I don't want to mark them down yet, I can also leave it blank and it's not going to impact their overall grade. Only once I check or X will it calculate like that. Now let's take a look at the presentation. Uh, I made this letter grades and I'm going to enter letters here. So Anu, I'm gonna give him an A. And let's take a look here. I'm going to do a B plus for Trent, but let's say for Cheryl's, I want to give her a 97. So I hit enter there because I put a number in and I get this message that says in order to enter a numeric value as a letter grade, the setting enable letter grade override must be enabled. Would you like to enable that setting now? I'm going to choose to enable that because what this is doing is Cheryl is getting an A plus for this. But if we take a look at that grade scale, scroll down a bit, we can see an A plus is actually a 98.5, but a 97% is still in that A plus range. So rather than giving Cheryl an A plus, I wanted to give her a 97. Uh, so all that's doing since I enabled the override is it will show Cheryl that she has an A+, but it will also show Cheryl that it is a 97% rather than the usual 98.5. I'll continue grading these. And now that I have all of my grades in here, I'm going to go ahead and click there to publish them because I want to show the difference between what Trent sees with just the B+, and what Cheryl sees with that letter grade override. Let's look at more choose view as. I'm going to go ahead and view as Trent. And here I can see that what Trent would see when he looks at his presentation is he sees the B plus and he knows that it's worth 80 points. If I choose Cheryl, it is showing 97, which is an A plus, but it is giving her both since I did not go with the standard A plus value, which was the 98.5. So that's the difference with that letter grade override. Okay, so now we're looking on our grade book here and we see the project category. I'm going to go ahead and publish those journals as well so my students could see them. The last display type to show is points. So right here we have class participation. This is that participation grade and it's going to be 10% of their total grade. So if I'm in here, I can go ahead and I'm just going to give them point values for their participation. So this is class participation. It is 10% of that overall total. So if I'm only entering one item into this category, it really doesn't matter if it's worth 100 points or one point because that single item is still going to be 10% of that overall grade because that is what the category is worth. I'm going to go ahead and publish that so my students can see it. And then I'm just going to show one more time what it looks like to go to that more tab and choose view as we're going to pick Trent and we can see how Trent is viewing his grades. Notice that he does not see that overall grade because when I did those settings, I did not choose to let him see that. So if I did go back to those settings, I click X and I take a look at that grade display. I can turn on any grades for the student that I want them to see. And now when I do that view as, and I choose Trent again. He can see his overall grade up here. He also sees the assignments that I have graded so far and published. And, oh, and one other thing to point out is this participation one. At first I said, why didn't it show up? But if you recall, when I set that class participation up, Let's go ahead and take a look at the edit details. I set it to not even be available until 3.15. So if I change that and made it available today and hit save, Trent would see that reflected as well. Uh, he just couldn't see it because I had made it available a date in the future. So now he can see it.
And that concludes the grades tab videos. You will see more with the grades tab as I talk a bit about assignments because it will fill in the grades tab quite a bit more. So just keep in mind as you're creating assignments over here in the assignments categories, they will populate into your gradebook and you will grade them in a similar way. You can either grade assignments in the grades tab, how I did these grade items here, or you can grade them in the assignments view where you can comment and see the details um, and that will carry right over into the grades tab. So join me for assignments next.